Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, June 9, 2021. Government has broadened the conditional cash transfer for the vaccinated CCTV program to now include all persons 60 years and older, regardless of their income level. Persons in the age group who are fully vaccinated can access a $10,000 incentive payment. And Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark has now announced that these seniors no longer need to have an annual income of $1.5 million or less to access the grant. Persons can begin applying for the grant on July 15 via the Finance Ministry's We Care online platform. On application, the applicants will be provided with a unique reference number, which they should keep because that will be used to track the progress of their application. And allow for queries to be responded to. Dr. Clark was speaking in Parliament yesterday. Referencing data from the Ministry of Health, he pointed out that 75% of those persons who died from COVID-19 as at June 5 this year were from the 60 and over age group. This pandemic does not end in Jamaica until a large majority of persons in the over 60 population is vaccinated. It is in the public interest, therefore, Madam Speaker, that this segment of the population that is vulnerable to COVID-19 is fully vaccinated. As at June 5, 42,254 of this cohort have received their first dose of the vaccine, with 7,052 being fully vaccinated. According to data from Statin, Jamaica's over 60 population stands at 379,700. The report of the Joint Select Committee on the Sexual Harassment Bill was tabled in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. Gender Minister Olivia Grange says this will be debated in the chambers next week and sensitization exercises will be done among parliamentarians and politicians. The minister was making her contribution to the sectoral debate. The report contains our recommendations following extensive consultations. When this bill becomes law, it will deal a blow to sexual harassment by bringing relief to victims, punishment to perpetrators, while acting as a deterrent to others. She says there is also a push for changes in the domestic violence legislation to include sanctions for psychological and emotional abuse. Minister Olivia Grange, who also manages the entertainment portfolio, says Prime Minister Andrew Holness will make an announcement on June 23 regarding the reopening of the sector. She says factors being considered are capacity limit and authorized venues where the necessary COVID-19 safety protocols can be implemented. As with the resumption of sports, the resumption of entertainment will have to be a gradual process. We're going to have to work this through. And no matter what noise is made out there, we're going to ensure it's done the right way. In the meantime, she says government has proposed a list of approved venues that will be made available at subsidized rates as a stimulus for the sector. These venues include facilities at Independence Park, Trelawney Stadium, the Port Royal Entertainment Zone, including Fort Rocky and Fort Charles, as well as Civil Heritage Park. Meanwhile, a grant support for the entertainment sector now stands at $50 million, an increase of $10 million. The Portfolio Minister says further support is being sorted as the needs are many for those hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister Grange says members were unable to access the funds due to technical glitches with the electronic system. But she says the app for the new platform is now in its final phase of development and will allow more members of the entertainment, culture and creative industry to register and apply for grants. The technical challenges that we experienced last year must not be taken to mean that members of the industry did not receive support from their government. We were still able to provide grants to 700 plus practitioners through the CARE program and through special grants from the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. According to Minister Grange, $14 million has been invested in the creative sector via direct sponsorship, with more than $40 million in direct financial support given to athletes preparing for the Tokyo Olympic Games. And finally, charges have been laid against persons associated with Rick's Cafe in Negril, Westmoreland. The charges stem from the cafe's recent staging of an entertainment festival in breach of the island's COVID-19 protocols that have been in place since March 2020. Continue to support our efforts by providing information on illegal activities. We want to give the country the assurance that the government will continue to act in a balanced way and we are at no time 
exercising or demonstrating any preferred treatment to any sector of the society. The local government minister made the announcement at this morning's post-cabinet press briefing. Rick's Cafe establishment was initially ordered closed for 11 days. On Tuesday, the local government ministry issued instructions for it to be reopened after the management applied for and received a Places of Amusement license. Meetings were also had on Friday between the management of Rick's Cafe and the local authorities. Minister McKenzie says a report into the incident will go before Prime Minister Andrew Holness next week. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.